It's good to welcome Celtic Frost back to the UK, just wrapping up their 1989 11-date tour of our country. And we're here at Hammersmith Odeon, or we were last night, weren't we? Yeah, a great yeah. night, too. <laughs> All the old uh, cameras, the lot, the Monty. Enjoyed it? Yeah, very, very much. Enjoyed, good, yeah. good. Yeah. How's the tour been so far? Because it's nearly coming to an end now, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's been it's been a lot of ups and downs because um, the tour is only a few gigs old. It's it's the the UK is the very start of of the world tour. It's the first country you're playing, and also it, it marks the first tour of this lineup. So it's been it's been a lot of a um, lot of busy days and everything, but it, it's come together very well. I think we're very proud and very happy the way it's going now. Especially uh, as you said last night, I think that was like the definite start. If not before, it was, it was great. Same here. I, I quite agree. And the, the the fact is, of course, I mean, you boys are, are so dynamic on stage. It's incredible. It's just uh, amazing, <laughs> you know. Thank you. Amazing. Thank I you. mean, the band has progressed, hasn't it? Well, I tend to think so. Um, it certainly is also a matter of, of having more mature musicians in the band than we had before and of having learned a lot during uh, 90... 87, the year that we have so many legal troubles and troubles with ourselves in the old lineup, uh, we certainly progressed from that. And uh, especially Oliver sitting here, Oliver was was in the band at the very end of this time, so he's having having a nose full of this too. And and we all saw what's wrong and what's not good. So I think we progressed from that on mostly. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And of course you are the founder member, Tom Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Thomas Gabriel Warrior, as yeah, they call you. Absolutely. Right, okay. Come from Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereabouts in Switzerland? Round Zurich, just close to Zurich. Right, Everybody. yeah. Yeah. You must surely be the heaviest band to have come out of Switzerland, surely. I, mean, <laughs> I would have thought. <laughs> what, what, have what, thought. About, what about Corner? Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course, Cor yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that, is, is, are Corner a new up-and-coming band or what? Put me in the picture. Um... You know, I know Corner very well, so I don't want to make yeah. advertising for them. <laughs> they don't deserve no. Um, I think we are certainly the most original band to come out of Switzerland, hopefully. But uh, I think as far as the heaviest of Russia's band, I think it's definitely Corner. And I think I think if they finally get to tour and if they get their act together, I think they're they're definitely having their possibilities. I think uh, I've been talking to a lot of fans, and I think they they certainly. Have have a great audience once they get a tour together. I think it's a shame that they that didn't get to tour till now. Mm. Yeah, very very true. Of course, it goes back a fair while for you, doesn't it? Uh, 1984, uh, working along with uh, Martin Eric Ayne and uh, in a ball c band called Hellhammer. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, it goes. If you talk about Hellhammer, it goes back to like 1982. That's really? when uh, Martin and me founded Hellhammer, and. Uh, Hellhammer existed until the uh, early days of 84 when Martin and me left because we were really frustrated with um, what the band was doing, that the band wasn't progressing, that we had all limits in the concept of the band and that's why we left and, and founded a band that had no borders which was Celtic Frost. Yeah, certainly. And of course you are very, very much of course, the, uh, the front man there. I am the front man very much but... Um, I, I always am the first to stress that this is a band situation rather than, than my right. solo project. It actually was more my solo project in the old lineup because Reed sadly didn't contribute anything musically and Martin contributed a lot of ideas but never directly wrote a song until uh, the album Into the Pandemonium, which was a shame because Martin is full of ideas but he has he has a hard time putting it down in vinyl so sure, yeah. I was ending up with, with doing most of the work so I'm very happy now that I can share talent with the other guys and that I can get some additional input that's good that's brilliant uh, one important thing of course uh, to remember that you got your deal with Noise Records I released your first album Morbid Tales yeah. and uh, uh, you wrote most of the lyrics for that, of course, didn't you? Yeah, I wrote most of the lyrics, but Martin wrote uh, a big piece of, of uh, lyrical work for that album. Uh, as I said before, I mean, without Martin, I don't think Sully Cross would exist in this form. Well, and, that's and good. Martin is, is working with the band to this very day, and he's going to be working on the next album as well, uh, especially in the lyric department. That might be interesting to know for the fans. Martin and me are still sticking together very much as far as lyrics and stuff. I look up to the guy very, very much. Why isn't he on stage with you now, then? Martin quit the band for personal reasons. He wanted to quit since, like, almost two years. 
we we had to talk him into recording into the pandemonium with us we had to talk him into doing the last tour of the uk and the ah. states he wanted to quit for for personal reasons for <coughs> um being more devoted to his his girl and for launching into um some serious comic and and record business he's like stockholder of a of a swiss record store and stuff and and he takes it very serious and um he will he will uh pursue a musical career but he won't be touring anymore i think no he he was very very tired of touring the world and not being home and and you know not seeing his girl and everything doesn't seem to bother you though touring no, does I, it no <laughs> i well it would bother me but uh i got married and i'm very happy to have my wife and me on tour yeah you know yeah what about you wally are you married i'm married yeah all oh, right yeah, yeah since yeah. almost two years but uh my wife stays at home <laughs> somebody has to work no i yes. just think uh, it works out better you know if you're not together like 24 hours a day and she just uh comes by time to time yeah. you know she just come over for a couple of days then she leave and comes back i think that's, that's nice yeah good yeah. solution well, that's okay what yeah. about kurt Kurt. Almost. <laughs> I just can say almost married. <laughs> ah. Yeah, we, we in the band, we, te we tend to say that he's almost married, but uh, the fact of the matter is that that Kurt is, um, that goes to all you girls out there, Kurt is always ready and willing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Priestley actually appeared on the first album, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, on the Morbid Tales album. Yeah. Did he also appear on on, on the second album, uh, to Megatherian, or what? No, we we made him the offer. We had, when we founded Celtic Frost, we had to find a drummer fairly quickly. And Martin, before he joined Hellhammer, played together with Stephen in the band Schizo. Now, uh, we played m on Morbid Tales with Stephen Priestley as a session drummer, and after we were very happy with Stephen's performance on the album, we asked him to join the band. But Steve had uh, been building up his own project at the same time. So Steve went off to make his own project after Moby Tales, and we continued, of course, with Reed St. Mark from New York, uh, what became our first permanent lineup. Right. But now we're very happy to have, have Steve's talents back in the band. We all think he's, he's a fantastic drummer. And uh, as far as Swiss drummers, we couldn't think of anybody else that, that would be able to do the job we require no 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 you had a very big breakthrough in in the united states of america uh with the tragic serenades tour yeah. highly successful it was fun S <laughs> celtic frost, frost goes over and slays america <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, well, some could say, uh, I wish they hadn't, but many have said you made, made a lot of fans over there, didn't you? It was a big piece of work, too. <laughs> you, you mentioned the Tragic Serenades tour, which, of course, was our first American tour, and mm. it was on a club level. Uh, right. We played halls up to, like, the Ritz size, which is 2,500, but we, besides that, we played rather more club-style halls, and, and it was a very hard piece of work. It, it, was, it was a low-budget tour back then and stuff. And I think later as a bass, I think if you can talk about a breakthrough, it certainly came when we returned uh, after the UK tour 87, when we returned on the One in Their Pride tour, the second time to the States, and we played co-headliners with Exodus, and then we jumped on the tour as special guests of Anthrax. Right. That, that really... Yeah, now you made pals with them, didn't you? Yeah. With Anthrax? With Anthrax. Yeah, I think we're fortunate enough to be a f be friends with Antrax since a very, very long time, long before that. We toured together before, and we've been friends before. I think uh, both bands appreciate each other's music a lot. Right. We've been we've been joking around playing playing Antrax songs at soundchecks, and they play Frost songs and everything. <laughs> and, and, yeah, we, we get along really well, actually, I'm very happy to That's say. Good. We were filming last night, and it went highly successfully. Uh, but you've so. actually had a video out before, haven't you? Uh, Circle of Tyrants. Yeah, we had yeah. two video clips. You had Circle of the Tyrants, of course. Right. And we had um, a concept video clip, which was uh, Cherry Orchards. Sure, sure. Which was done in London, England. Right. Course. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. done by Xavier Russell. Son of Ken Russell. It was a pleasure to work with him. It was sure, great. sure. It's he's a great experience. guy. He's a great guy. Loves loves he heavy music. He can actually, be. He's, actually, a, he's a morbid guy. <laughs> <laughs> More morbid tales. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, uh, but, but Xavier, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned, of course, Exodus. I mean, he's he's a big Exodus fan. He was the, oh, yeah. he was the guy to have brought Exodus to this country. I mean, so. Well, he, he was the guy who, who kind of cracked Celtic Frost over here. Right. I mean, yeah. Kerrang! I hate to say, by now I hate to say, but Kerrang once really were the force that made us big. 
I mean, they slacked off movie tales, but from then on, we had the big support. But the man behind the support was always Xavier Russell. Mm. I mean, without Xavier, I don't think we'd be anywhere near what we are now here in the UK. I mean, he's he's been so believing and stuff. It's 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 just too much. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible though because into the pandemonium, which was released in 1987. Um, I mean, everybody gave that rave reviews, and quite rightly so. Fabulous mm. album. I, I I like the eccentricity of it. Um, I don't know what you what your feelings are. Uh, what are your feelings, Ollie? I mean, it is it is less, but it is over the top, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. You know, it uh, just it doesn't have any borders. This album, no, no, and, no. and a cover version too of uh, Mexican Radio. Oh, we enjoyed that the one very much. Yeah, Wall we of still Voodoo. do actually. Yeah, yes, I like that. That sounded uh, good on stage. Oh, thank too. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Tell me something a little bit about um, I Won't Dance, which a lot of people would say is, uh, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a real, it, it's, it's, the lyrics are quite sordid on that, actually, taken from the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian yes. Book of the Dead, right. Well, it surprised me that you know that. Uh, I'm very proud of that. Actually, I just listened to it this morning <laughs> for the first time in like a year, and uh, to me that's that's probably one of the best lyrics that I wrote on my own. Uh, it's it's a typical frost piece in that it's heavy, yet it's melodic at the same time. It's it marks typical later style frost, and it also marks typical frost in that um, there's a big piece of humor in there in that we are playing around with titles. Sure. The um, the 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 message in the song comes out in the lyrics, not in the title. In Celtic Frost, very often, if if hardcore fans hear the title "I Won't Dance," they probably will. Sorry to say, puke. <laughs> but but it's certainly one of the most serious songs we've ever written. Yeah. As you said, it's it's about the death and everything. And and the lyrics for me are very personal. Yeah, and of course you played on stage last night uh, a, a track off the new album, uh, Downtown Han Hanoi. Yeah. Uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. Just explain because you gave a, a nice little a little piece beforehand, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I if I would put all the thoughts here in the microphone that I put in that song it would take hours and hours and hours um, the song is just dedicated to to people who died in the war for 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 nothing it's 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 pretty senseless that that we human beings slaughter down each other continuously ever since we exist and of course this is like a pretty pretty serious th theme and it goes deep and deep and deep but we just tried to put like a, a microscopic three-minute message on our album you know, as as far as, as the limits allow you to do that. You see, as a person that comes from Switzerland, which of course during the war was a neutral country, as, as well <laughs> you will know. Supposedly. Well, supposedly, yeah. 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 It was, though. I mean, supposedly, wasn't yeah. it? Right. Yeah, well, yeah. They, there um, was a lot of collaboration with, with the Nazi Nazi leadership in Germany, which is very embarrassing for Switzerland. You know, it, there was a lot of undercover, miserable things happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's probably why Switzerland got spared. But uh, I know what you probably want to say. It's that that um, that a person from Switzerland goes into such a theme without being involved in in a recent war. But um, there's so many things. You know, Switzerland is like one of of the bigger weapon suppliers of many countries, even though it's illegal. And uh, you know, I'd, I'm I'm very much into that subject. I'm I'm reading books about that. I'm I'm, I'm watching documentaries about that. It's something that that to me. Should bother every single person on this planet. I mean, it's 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 something that just it's it bothers me. Yeah. It's it's it unbelievable. It you, know? you can't you can't me. get around the fact that that there's wars right now as we talk. I know there's people dying continuously. You know. Yeah. Very very true. Very true. There was actually I, I thought uh, for a moment that uh, Reed actually wrote a song for Into the Pandemonium because it was an ideal. Uh, the Invincible Factor is uh, the was in that never in inevitable factor. Right. Yes. That song is on tape in two versions. We recorded it, mm -hmm. and um, we had a very hard time with the song. Uh, to be honest, um, we wrote it on the piano. I converted it to gu guitar and made. I wrote the arrangement. We recorded two versions during the recording sessions of that album. We have it on tape. I don't know if it's ever gonna be released. Reed himself wasn't so confident about it anymore. We tried to put it on a 12-inch B-side or something. But Reed wasn't so confident, so we put it in storage. And of course, now Reed isn't with us anymore. And uh, we moved on. It might it might be surfacing. Sully Frost 
have a lot of plans and if you ever do a compilation of unusual Celtic Frost recordings it might certainly be on there well, there's two versions there's there's a version that is very new wavy and there's a version that is very thrashy so there's a lot of possibilities with this song it's certainly right. a very very unusual song right now then on into the pandemonium you used a lot of different instruments you used flutes and horns and tin parley yeah. shallows violins the kitchen sink <laughs> <laughs> the lavatory brush <laughs> <laughs> ollie's head everything yeah even the choir yeah, yeah. um but uh, on the new album it's been very very much a band effort yeah. Love the new album, Cold Lake, it's called, and um, it's a beautiful, colourful cover. Uh, <laughs> we see the yeah, different type of stage dress. Out goes the, should we say, the black, not the black metal, that's a horrible word, isn't it? What do we call it? The black? I don't think we have a black metal. I think, no. uh, also think you shouldn't say that so general. Um, I think I think it goes out on this one picture. Sully Force has been a band of a million different songs and a million of different images, as you can certainly see when you look at the sleeves yeah and this album certainly is a, a new step a new stage in our career and as you will see in the forthcoming cherry orchards 12 inch there's another image of Celtic frost which is as well Celtic frost as this picture is or or the older albums right it just right. marks another influence or another another ad additional direction in Celtic Frost's career yeah album produced by Tony Platt yeah. The guy responsible for Another Perfect Day, who just by coincidence is my mode head who are appearing uh, at a venue in Manchester tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Stephen Priestley was saying that, um, quite frankly, uh, Another Perfect Day was his favourite mode head album. Oh, I think we all yeah, yeah, I so agree, 100%. Yeah. We all think like that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 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 What made you choose Tony Platt? Because you do, w were the rest of your albums self-produced, or what? Um, no, we had the variety of people working with us, uh, but right. we always tended to have a watch and eye over there because we had so many complex ideas that, that we always were afraid that some people wouldn't understand us, which, of course, very often happened. So we always tended to co-produce, at least. Uh, and so it is with this album. We we actually co-produced this album with Tony Platt. And um, how we got to Tony Platt, we we when we formed this lineup, we we wrote the songs all together. We we wanted to sell to somebody really professional, somebody so-called having a big name in the business, because we wanted to have somebody who really knows in and out what he's doing and knows the mixing desk and everything. We're only the band. We can't produce the art on the album, no. but we have to have somebody to produce the sound as well. And we didn't want to have just somebody second rate. We wanted to have somebody who does what we want to have. Well, he's really done the business. He's done he it really to ninety percent, maybe. There's yeah. there's details that we're unhappy with, but we all, I think, feel that this is our best album so far. <coughs> we think that's the best production we could achieve. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. yeah. And of course, it comes over live. I mean, what, do you, what what what? Very often, what a producer does, a studio producer, is 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 gives you encouragement for presenting something live. And it came out so well live. Oh, it does on stage. Celtic Frost are very much a live band. You love working with your audiences, don't you? Let's talk about his guitar playing. You <laughs> are totally unique. Ollie <laughs> is. is <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I mean, Stephen is is an incredible drummer. Yeah, so is. visual, but also he can do the business too. But I mean, Ollie, where did you get that style from? It's it's it can't be anyone else like you. You're a freak. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just too lazy to practice, no. <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> oh, oh, yes! Yeah. No, I just... Yeah, it's just the way I feel, you know? <laughs> I'm a little weirdo, and so I play kind of weird stuff sometimes, you know? It's just... It comes out how it comes, you know? And I almost never play two times the same stuff, you know? I got the structure of the, of the solos, and I just make some variations in it, you know, just how it feels and how I feel. It's good, good. You work very well, of course, with Tom. Tom, you play uh, what are your, the two guitars. You use two guitars. What, what, what are those two? Um, what do you mean, I? Yeah. The guitars that I use, the kind of guitars. Oh, it's just basic Stratocaster guitars of, of various companies. It's Charwell and, and St. Plus and whatever. It's it's just I I focus very much on on delivering the rhythm on which Oliver builds up his his framework and stuff. Um, I'm very happy in in being a rhythm guitar player because I think uh, Oliver does what I will never be able to achieve. And um, 
I think too we work well together and that probably is because we know each other since like some seven years or, or something That's like great. that and, great. and we've been knowing each other's playing quite quite often we've been hearing each other and stuff and and so when we finally got together in the same lineup it wasn't any problem to get together no all. there were hints that uh, Stephen uh, or it was released in the British press was going to leave the band uh, yes he we was, yeah. know now that yes, that you saw yesterday. <laughs> yeah. no he had he had some kind of heavy personal trouble before Christmas there was some stuff with his family involved and stuff and we shouldn't go deep into that here but uh, all I can say the band is totally behind Stephen and we are extremely happy to bring him here and it's certainly not going to be a lineup change I think we shocked the fans enough with having such a drastic lineup change and we don't want to destroy their f their faith one more time by doing the same thing over and over I agree this is this is this is a Celtic Frost lineup and it's going to stay a Celtic Frost lineup so after the UK where do you go from here oh well, we, we go back for a couple of days to Switzerland to mm -hmm. our wives and whatever <laughs> 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 and then we just uh go for the States for like, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 gigs. Yeah, something like that. We have <sighs> like, like 10 that. days off between here and the States. Break. Yeah. After that, it's continental Europe and, and uh, as I hear, Japan. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Very nice. You've been to yeah. Japan yeah. before? No, no, sadly <laughs> not. I'm, I'm starving to play there. Yeah, be I've good. We've been having a lot of Japanese fans. We've been having very good press over there and, and uh, we've been very successful as far as sales. So I think it's, it's about time that we can make it over there. Yeah. Yeah, it's essential because they, oh, they can buy your LPs, can't they? Over there? Yeah, absolutely. Right. They're released yeah. over there officially and everything. And and every band I know in the business, from Anthrax to I don't know who, tells me how great uh, Japan is. So we're certainly dying to play there. Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the most important thing—it's been lovely talking to you over for That's two days. Um, well, uh, same thank here. you very yeah. much for coming up to Manchester, not just sticking with London. So many people stick with London. Well, uh, so you you always do us proud because you came up last time. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, we played the Apollo last time, and we felt we had a, we had a great kick there. We enjoyed it very much. So, what can I say? I'm happy to be back here, and uh, I just want to stress that the, it was a pleasure to be here with you. you great, know, the pleasure's yeah. on our side. Yeah. And a little a little message for Ollie: it doesn't always rain in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try and fix it up for you later on tonight. It doesn't always rain. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers.